and it's about this. <sighs> it's about ramen noodle, y'all. It's about freaking ramen noodle. I want y'all to listen to this right quick. We're starting from a different point where forget about the dis debate about pro-family policies. We have anti-family policies in this country, right? So we need to get that government out of the way. Let me teach you something about the 1960s, okay? Lyndon Johnson launched the greatest misnomer in political history when he called it the Great Society. It was the Awful Society is actually what he unleashed, where they actually paid families. And he was supposedly in the name of helping back black families. A black family, by the way, 70% of black kids in the 1960s, over 70% were born into two-parent households. Right. Yeah. right. Today, it's less than 30%. Why? Because you get what you pay for. So they paid them more to actually have a single-parent household. That mom could make more, saying, I'm married to Uncle Sam instead of married to you. Well, why the heck do I have you around? Well, I don't really blame them for making, I mean, we've induced people to make economic decisions. They make the decisions in part that they're incentivized to make. You get what you pay for. So I think the low hanging fruit is get the government the heck out of the way with these anti-family policies. Yeah. And then we restore the best known governing institution to mankind. We conservatives, we do say, and I'm with you. I say that we don't trust the big government. When we say in God, we trust in the bottom of our coins. Let me translate that for you. It means in government, we distrust. That's what it means. But the best known governing institution to mankind, it's not just that we're against big government. We're in favor of that best known form of governance, the two parent stable family household. It was OK, so this is Vivek Ramaswamy. I've talked about him a couple of times on the channel. Some people was like, who, who he was in the chat was saying, who is ramen noodle? <laughs> That's the nickname that I've given him. Y'all know I love to give out nicknames to these clowns. But yes, this is Vivek Ramaswamy. He is one of the people that's planning on running for president on the Republican ticket in 2024. And Noam King actually said it in the chat before I had a chance to, I, but I didn't want to stop the video. But before I actually get into a shout out to Trinity Girl to the Bone for the super chat, she said, thank you, Torian Reloaded B1. I appreciate it. Noam King actually said it in the chat. There is not one black person in this room. Again, there is not one black person in this room, yet he has the nerve to sit up there and talk ish about us. Now, he will get in front of a crowd of people that where there's not one black person there and talk about us in front of them. And it's recorded and it's like it's not like it's not going to get back to us because we clearly see it, saw it floating online. So we definitely know that it is you. So. I tell you, the only way this guy can thrive is whenever he's talking about us. And no one can you are right. Black people live rent free in everyone's minds. That's why he said we have no friends. Vivek Ramaswamy, a.k.a. Ramen Noodle, is a perfect example of that. All you got to do, for those of y'all are unaware, just go to his, uh, his Twitter account. This guy has a whole shrine on a given day of him just talking crap about black people. And his constituents and his followers, his base, just sit there and eat it up like it's the gospel truth. I kid you not. This guy brought up about the family structure and decided to use black people as an example. When he could have honestly used any family for that matter, but... Society structures it as the broken family and the broken home has to be the black family. Just like when I did that video earlier today on Rachel Campos Duffy, 
who was talking about Mar Mauricio Garcia, the shoot the Allen, Texas mall shooter, saying that fa coming from fatherlessness and smoking marijuana, who do they put that on? Now, mind you, I believe she said that before she even knew the identity of the shooter. But she went to fatherlessness and marijuana. We know who they're talking about when they say that. It's the code speak. They were talking about black people. They absolutely hate when there, and whenever there is a situation like that that happens and is uh, not a black person that does it. That's why they had to try to get in front of it when they learn that Mauricio Garcia not only was the shooter, but also had white supremacist ties. You should have saw the, the horde of comments from white people on Twitter trying to get in front of that. They were saying he's Mexican. He's Latino. He's Hispanic. He's whatever. There's no possible way that he could be a white supremacist. Shout out to Professor Black Truth for the video that he did about the history about the Latino community and their ties to white supremacy or their white supremacist views. That video opened my eyes all the way up when I, when I was watching that, that video from beginning to end. But yeah, like I said, keep an eye on Vivek Ramaswamy because this dude is running a whole campaign for presidency on anti-black, particularly anti-black American rhetoric. He always finds a way to slip in a dig or a few digs at that about black people to try to drive home his point. And again, he had the nerve to say what he just said in this almost two minute video in front of a crowd of white people. And I noticed that some of y'all said it in the chat. We see one right here. I'm going to just say that we see one right here. I'm going to be honest, some of them probably don't even believe half the stuff he'd be saying. But if it's about us, they'll entertain it. Miss Renee said, is he even a citizen? <sighs> He's first generation born. Does anyone care to guess how old Vivek is? I'm willing to bet without Googling, Googling it, some of y'all are not going to get it. Because I was shocked when I found out how old he was. And by the way, he is from... Uh, he's from the... I, I forgot what stage from. Shout out to Modot J for the fifty dollars super chat. He said, "You know how it is when the mirror is in front of them." Oh, of course. Majestic got it correct. Vivek is thirty-seven. He is three years older than me. He is a millennial. And this great value of Latin has all this vitriol for us. And we've been here longer than he and his family has. Keep it up. He'll be on a one magic carpet ride back to Agrabah. 